Uh, hi, I'm Pete. This, slide, this uh, talk is too long, so there's no time for introductions. Uh, I have a disclaimer too. I'm not a UX professional. I quite like UX, and I've worked with quite a lot of UX professionals. So this is more of a, like a fun, silly talk than anything serious. Um, so for anyone who's not familiar with UX, uh, this is my personal definition. So I say it's the study of usability applied, if I can remember this, uh, applied holistically, oh fuck, I can't. Applied holistically <laughs> to the wider context of your user's entire experience with your product or service. So, where usability is a narrow field, it's like, can they use your product? UX would be looking more at, well, looking at that, but also looking at, like, did they achieve what they wanted to achieve with your product? Uh, you know, are they doing something that's actually better for them? So, wider, wider issues. Um, so, what is this talk about? If anyone's heard of this book, Everyday UX, um, unrelated, this book is not about this talk. Uh, this talk is not about this book. Um, uh, also, uh, you might have seen a lot of things. People often use uh, everyday examples to kind of like compare back to, uh, to digital examples to kind of make them easier to understand. Uh, we're also not doing that. Um, so, uh, what's it actually about? So, I'm just going to talk about the UX of some like everyday things. Um, Having thought about UX for like a really long time, I just can't see UX, I can't not see it everywhere now. Um, so, uh, mugs, traffic lights, aeroplanes, <laughs> these are all things that you can apply UX to. It's kind of a universal uh, set of rules you can use to uh, make your design better. Um, so, obvious example one, as an obvious example two. Obvious example one, uh, push and pull doors. So the, the handle and plate, you know, they're kind of all over the place and they provide what's known as an affordance, uh, which you can think of as like a hint for how you use them. So while well, we've got the text here, it's kind of secondary. Like if it wasn't here, you'd still know how to use it. Um, the other nice thing about these, so these are good UX, I'm trying to say that. Uh, the other nice thing about these is the, uh, it's now a design pattern. So it's been done for years and years and years. Uh, and now people go up to these and they, they, ex they, they know what's going to happen. So if you put uh, a handle on a push door, people will walk <coughs> up, up to it and just sort of like try and uh, pull it and it won't work. Um, so this is kind of an important UX principle is to kind of know how your users use interfaces that are similar to yours uh, and try and respect that. And uh, if you really, there are really times when you might want to like change that but you have to really have a good reason to do that. Um, obvious example two, uh, this is the one you get if you search for like real world UX, you'll get someone doing this and they'll say, that road is design and that path is UX. Um, that's basically nonsense because uh, it doesn't work like that in, in urban planning. So these are called desire paths and these are what urban planners, uh, they have this concept because they know that they, they make a plan and then people don't follow the plan. Um, so this is kind of a, a thing that works in, in UX in the same way in that you have to do a lot of research into your users and like get solid numbers about what they're going to do. So possibly this was some bad planning where they didn't think that maybe people want to take bikes along this staircase, well down through this point and they didn't think about this but um, as I said, urban planners get a bad rep, they actually put a lot of thought into this. So, for all we know, there's a school that was built behind the left photograph and now people are taking that path. Don't really know what's going on there, but it's kind of an interesting example. Um, so yeah, user testing, very important. Um, so let's talk about door handles. <laughs> um, so in 2013, City of Vancouver um, banned door knobs. Um, they still have door handles, um, but this is actually like a really good UX decision, um, and they probably didn't ever think of it in that terms. Um, they're thinking in, in terms of just ease of use, uh, but it's got a lot of benefits because you know anyone who's got a tr might have trouble grasping and twisting at the same time and exerting pressure there um, is going to have uh, issues with 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 these doorknobs. Um, you know, what have we got next? Yes. So, question: Some of you asking might be asking is, isn't this just accessibility? does this have to be UX too? And for that I would say yes. So I think my view is that UX has to include accessibility because if you had sort of look at the <coughs> continuum of how usable something was, then uh, 
you start on the very far left with someone who's able-bodied and knows exactly how to use the thing and is going to you know, have no trouble at all. And someone on the far side who's maybe never used it before, ha maybe has a severe physical disability. Then there's a kind of continuum of possible scenarios all, all across there. You know, you've got like uh, temporary injuries, you've got um, situational disabilities. I think Seren used that in the talk. Um, but like, I really like this concept because if you think about all the different possibilities, if you were to, um, uh, if you were to consider all of those, then if you're just thinking about your ideal case with that one person over there who's completely fine and uh, knows exactly what they're doing, then you're kind of probably going to be excluding a majority of your users. And it goes back to the research. If you're not thinking about how your users are going to use this, you're not going to produce a good result. Um, but there are, there are things that kind of get in the way. Um, so there's a lot of like conflict and compromise that happens with UX. Um, so you can have other requirements that compete. And in a business, those are, you know, may or might, may not be more important than UX. So visual design, classic one, the person who shows the visual design of this carpet decided they wanted, that was more important than people being able to see the stair boundaries. <laughs> um, but you also get kind of like sales decisions. So sales, people want uh, their, you know, they want the, the, the pricing to be a little bit more confusing so we can get a little bit more money out of people, the marketing, similar things. And security, you know, the, more, the most usable building would have no doors because they get in the way and they stop you doing what you want to do. But we kind of need that for strong security. Um, so a fun example of this, um, Pitkin County, Colorado banned doors, door handles rather than door knobs, so the opposite of Vancouver. Uh, any guesses? Bears. <laughs> the bears already opened the door by this point. He actually, on the rest of the gift, he goes on to, like he leaves this car and goes to another door. Um, so this, this place has decided the, the, um, the, the safety of, like, the risk of bear attacks is, oh, been, yeah, okay, the risk of bear attacks is bigger than the sort of usability needs of, of having nicer door handles for humans. Um, okay, I've got a quiz. Um, so this is my fridge, well, this is the dial on my fridge. Um, so it's got one to five. So um, hands up those who think five is the warmest setting. Okay, and then hands up who thinks five is the coldest setting. Okay, I get the feeling that some of the, some of the, the former were, were trolling me. <laughs> so, yeah, it's actually five is the uh, coldest, so it's like the most cooling Maximum effort. cold. Maximum <laughs> cold. Um, Which is wrong. <laughs> um, well, I mean... It's actually not that surprising because it's quite a room of probably quite technical people. Um, and. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got it right, but like, that's, that's degrees to normal people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So when you are building a system, when you're designing a system, you're like intimately aware of exactly how it works and all the terminology. So when you come to design interfaces, it's really easy to have a sort of technical bias and uh, not even think about it. Just go, well, obviously, five is most cooling, because we think in terms of cooling, we are fridge people. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they call themselves that. Um, I'm sorry, it's normal people. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's another thing to think about when you're sort of thinking about your UX is, do you have some kind of bias that you're building into it through just knowing about the system? Um, another reason why when you're testing, you get people who know nothing um, about your system. You, you don't want... You don't want like, someone from accounting to come because they've heard all of the terms and they know all about how it all fits together, even if they're not really technical. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Blah, blah, blah. No time. Blah. Right. Best of, um, best of bad UX. So here's a few of my... One minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of my favourite ones. Like, I like that this is, like, this is like getting colder, but then that was just cold. So is that like a reset? I don't know. Um, this one makes sense for a minute, and then you're like, oh, both directions point to cold? It's great, and there's numbers on the side. Are they degrees? Do we know? No one knows. 
Um, and then my favourite... Oh, no, oh, I had that one in. That's an Ikea thing, don't buy it. It's all important. Um, and, yeah, my favourite thing is... Yeah, I love washing machines. Because, like, there's four asterisks on this dial. What does the asterisk do? There's 330 degrees. Like, I'm sure some of you are like, oh, yeah, I know what this is. It's all cool. But, like, what's a diamond... Superman, is that Superman logo? <laughs> What's happening? Um, so that's fun. Um, and I don't have time to do a whole section about kettles um, because I've got 10 seconds left, but um, thanks. <laughs>